blocked. Nachushkin with it, Burakovsky, he scores! Andre with a giant goal! What a night that was. The Avs take game one in the first ever Stanley Cup final overtime game in Denver. Everyone's goal to, to be a champion and, um, and win that cup. Now the Avs look to game two, but know the series has a long way to go. Still got a long way to go. Just a reset uh, mindset, you know, just to, you know, it's, it's a play hockey game now. Plus, there's fears of a recession as stocks sink lower on Wall Street. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship. The steps the Biden administration is considering to try to lower prices. Plus, a Colorado company is bringing the heat this summer. My friends and family were, were like, oh my God, this is one of the best hot sauces I've ever had. Happening now at 11, the House Committee investigating, investigating the January 6th Capitol attack is just moments away from holding its third public hearing. ABC News has broken into programming for a special report. So if you're watching us right now uh, via your favorite streaming device or on Denver 7 Plus or the DenverChannel.com and would like to watch that, you can tune in to regular over-the-air Denver 7 or just change over uh, your live sources here. Just hit your back button and you can find that. Now, part of today's hearings, Former Vice President Mike Pence, he's going to be in the spotlight today. The committee will focus on former President Donald Trump's attempts to persuade Pence to overturn the 2020 election results. But Pence will not be testifying. That committee, again, is set to start that hearing in just a few moments. Comrade is shot, blocked by Hedman. Score! Burakovsky! That's the goal by Andre Burakovsky, scoring less than two minutes into overtime, giving the Avs a 4-3 win in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Final. The Avs now just three wins away from their first Stanley Cup in more than 20 years. Last night's game was the first ever Stanley Cup Final overtime game played in Denver. The Avs scored three goals in the first period, then Tampa stormed back, sending things to OT before Burakovsky ended it. The Lightning pushed back in games after a loss, and the Avs are preparing for that Saturday night. We look at that game last night. We liked large portions of it, didn't like portions of it, and some of the things that we can correct, um, regardless of how Tampa plays, that we have a certain identity and that we need to play to to be successful. We've learned that over the course of this season, especially. I was head coach Jared Bednar this morning. I asked Bo Byram post game last night if those were the types of back and forth, highly competitive games they expect out of the Lightning moving forward. He said, absolutely. So it should be a heck of a series. Here's a look at some stats from last night's game. This was the 20th time that game one of the Stanley Cup final went to overtime. The last time it happened was in 2014. The Avs are now a perfect 4-0 in game one this postseason. <laughs> have been watching these kinds of videos all morning. The crowd just erupting with that game winner and the Avs overtime win. I was in the building and it was the loudest I have ever heard it. There were thousands inside, thousands more outside, all celebrating that big win. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta reports on how fans are reacting to that game one win. The excitement was just seeping out of the thousands of fans that were watching game one of the Stanley Cup final right inside of Ball Arena. Take a listen and a look at this. You see all of those fans there on the way out of the arena chanting as loud as can be and of course that excitement wasn't just happening inside of Ball Arena, it was also happening right outside and also at the Tivoli Quad. We made them, we won, that's game one baby! Tampa's a great team, we got everything it takes this year. We're taking the cup home. They're going to bring it back to Colorado. Hopefully it's in four, but I think five, six, we got it. It's yep. ours. We have like pretty good solid all four lines. Um, I think we're going to do really well this year. Um, our defense is really strong. Great got, got great goalies. I think we're going to get it this year. I think it's just the, the camaraderie and the chemistry that everybody has. Um, they just play really well together and they all have the same goal in mind. We want the cup! We want the cup! We want the cup! 
Some of you might be asking yourselves this morning how the Tivoli Quad is doing after hours of fans partying there last night. We swung by really early this morning and it looks really clean. The staff there did their job. They picked up everything they could see and made that spot look just as good as before the party actually started. And game two is next. That's happening on Saturday. We will keep up with that and bring you all of those updates as we have them. We're in Denver this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Now you'll also be able to watch the abs at two other watch parties, one in Chopper Circle near Ball Arena and another in McGregor Square near, Co near Coors Field. You do need tickets for a section of that party in McGregor Square. You can buy those online. City and county officials in Denver are making sure we're all staying safe while watching the abs. Law enforcement will monitor all home game Pepsi Zero watch parties. They're also working with state and federal investigators to evaluate potential threats surrounding the final. Right now, there aren't any. Denver's Office of Emergency Management is also preparing for the abs taking home the Stanley Cup and any potential championship celebrations. Well, Denver 7 will be here to get you ready for Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Final. Our coverage starts at 7 a.m. Saturday morning. Our pregame show is then at 5.30 and the puck drops at 6 again on Saturday. You can watch the game right here on Denver 7. Then you can just stay with us after the game for our postgame show and then Denver 7 News at 10. So plenty of us obviously thinking about talking about the abs, but another major sporting event could also be coming to Denver. FIFA will announce, announce the host cities for the 2026 World Cup this afternoon. And Denver is on the short list, one of about a dozen cities in North America in the running to host. Ten U.S. cities, along with three each in Canada and Mexico, will be chosen. Hosting World Cup games in Denver could bring in $90 million in revenue for the city, according to some estimates. Stocks are back in the red today, just one day after making gains on Wall Street. The S&P is down nearly 3% and the Dow is down about 700 points. Economists have warned of big swings in the market as investors worry about a fragile economy. The stock market is adding to growing concerns about a looming recession. The Biden administration is focused on inflation and record high gas prices. Mona Kosar Abdi reports on the executive action the president might take to lower prices. This morning, with inflation the number one issue of concern for most Americans and no relief in sight when it comes to gas prices, new reaction to the letter President Biden sent yesterday to big oil executives blaming their corporate greed along with the war in Ukraine for the record high prices at the pump. The president warned the executives he could invoke emergency powers to increase output at refineries, writing, quote, profit margins well above normal being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. But the White House is not sharing how the president might use his executive powers. We are calling on them to do the right thing, to be patriots here uh, and not to use the war uh, as an excuse. Oil refinery capacity is down by 3 million barrels a day since 2020. But the American Petroleum Institute blames Biden's green energy push, claiming the administration's, quote, misguided policy agenda shifting away from domestic oil and natural gas has compounded inflationary pressures. And as for those record profits, oil companies are saying they're making up for big losses during the pandemic, like the $22 billion loss ExxonMobil reported in 2020. Any revenues that are being made right now are being made up to uh, balance out losses from back in 20 and 21, and also to now begin reinvesting. In the meantime, stock futures were up overnight after the Federal Reserve's latest move to bring down inflation, raising interest rates by three quarters of a point, making everything from car loans to credit card debt more expensive. Fed Chair Jerome Powell says it's still possible to avoid a recession, but a growing number of economists disagree. I think that events of the last few months have raised the degree of difficulty, created great challenges. And there's new evidence of the toll inflation is taking on the economy. Retail spending unexpectedly dropped last month. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. So here's a look at some other things the White House is looking at to try to lower surging gas prices. One is a federal gas tax holiday. The government also approved more than 3,500 oil and oil drilling permits on federal land in Wyoming and New Mexico. But the EPA is suing those approvals, saying that it violates laws that protect the environment. 
Taking a quick look at Colorado's gas prices, we're now at $4.97 a gallon as our average. Prices have gone up 11 cents in the past week and nearly 80 cents in the past month. The U.S. average is dropping slightly, but it's still at $5 a gallon. Governor Jared Polis is taking steps to strengthen Colorado's workforce. Today, he's set to announce a plan to expand apprenticeship programs. The governor says this will help Coloradans get good paying jobs. The governor is also celebrating Juneteenth today. This is a live look from the state capitol where the Juneteenth flag is now flying. Governor Polis signed a bill last month making Juneteenth a state holiday. It became a federal holiday last year. Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration commemorating the end of slavery in the U.S. Well, coming up, a Colorado ski resort is ready for guests this summer. And a spicy Colorado business is making a comeback after the pandemic and wants to add flavor to your next cookout.